Welcome traders to today's live market analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Uh, just going to give it another 30 seconds here before we, uh, we get going. Um, if you can hear me, the audio is clear and you can see the tick mail welcome screen. Could you just type a Y in the chat box so that I know we are uh, we're good to go? Uh, 10 seconds at the top of the hour. I'm not going to look out for those. Okay, let's hit record and get this show on the road. Uh, Ruth. Um, if you can, uh, with respect to questions, if you can hold your questions uh, to the end of the session, um, I'll open up a, uh, a Q&A at the end, and so you'll, uh, you'll have an opportunity to, uh, to ask any questions then. Thanks very much. Okay, so before we get going with today's chart analysis, uh, as always, I want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most importantly for uh, today's content, the views and information expressed by me are solely mine and they are not indicative of or representative of those held by Tick Mill UK Limited or Tick Mill Europe Limited. Uh, so for those of you who are here for the first time today, a uh, brief introduction to me. Uh, like I said, my name is Patrick Manley and after I graduated from King's College London, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup that was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, quite literally at times overnight, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately, day gambling. And after some early beginner's luck, I managed to rack up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I basically began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains, and then ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. So this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience in the savings. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game, uh, researching and developing strategies, extensively back and forward testing them, all of which were all underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most, and most importantly, I made what was the watershed shift from being a highly goal oriented individual focused purely on financial gains to becoming process orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my trading edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've been managing investor capital through a managed account service, also delivering annual positive returns, as you can see on the screen. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. From 2010, I've been mentoring private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my uh, fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickner. My other passion project, and the, sorry, I should mention here, you can register, you can register on the Tickner blog 
if you leave, drop your email address in there, you can get automatic updates of my daily market outlook. I also provide daily uh, technical analysis and setups that I'm watching in video format, uh, chart hits or the Elliott Wave updates. And you can access those by either following me on LinkedIn or through Instagram, Patrick Munley FX. My other, I guess, passion project is leading trader education for a premier trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. Uh, at FX Career Swap, we don't just offer development and funding to retail trading talent. Uh, we work on developing mindsets through a structured program that culminates in the possibility of managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And if you want to get in touch with the Trade Desk in London, the number is uh, there on the screen at the moment. Or equally, if you want to drop them an email and they'll come back to you in a timely fashion, explain more about what we do at FX Career Swap and how you could get involved. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. And now we can jump into the charts. I can see there are a couple of questions being asked. If you could say, if you could just um, make a note of your questions. And like I say, at the end of uh, the presentation, I'll open up uh, for a period of, uh, of Q&A. Uh, where I can answer uh, or answer the questions there. Okay, so let's jump into the charts. Uh, first chart I want to look at here is the S&P 500. Um, this is a, uh, a weekly chart. And since we made the low, the, the post-pandemic low uh, in the S&P last March, we have been moving in 24-week um, cycles, plus or minus one week. And um, those cycles have basically preceded a uh, corrective phase that normally lasts in three to four weeks. And the next cycle completion uh, actually comes in next week at the 19th of July. So plus or minus one. So um, we are just entering a window now where we could see a, uh, a corrective move in the S&P. You'll note we've got significant momentum divergence, which is obviously something I, I pay attention to. Uh, so this it's worth knowing that we're, we're just in a window here where we could see a bit of an uptick in terms of volatility. I go into the daily chart. I shared this chart this morning, uh, looking for a pullback here to test uh, this 42.44 area. It's the monthly pivot. We've got weekly range support 42.68. And we've also got this ascending trend line support. This would be the fourth test of this trend line. And for those who work with me on a regular basis, you'll know that I pay close attention to third tests. Fourth tests do offer a higher probability of the potential of actually breaking. So if, uh, if we don't find buyers stepping in here, we're having a, a bit of an outside reversal day to day, potentially developing. Obviously, we need to see where we close. But um, if buyers don't step in in this zone, and it could be that we're in for a deeper corrective move and we can start to think about this type of pattern developing, whereby we take out the trend line support and then we ultimately put in a three wave corrective move, uh, which could see us trading down into uh, the 4039 area in terms of the, uh, in terms of the S&P here. So we, want, we really wanna pay very close attention if, uh, if this selling persists on how price responds at this trend line and, and if we do get a break, then we, uh, we know where we're looking for in terms of targets to the downside. And then what we'd be anticipating would be uh, that should, once we've got a first leg in play in terms of the correction, then we'd be looking for a, a second leg to the downside. So we want to just keep a really close eye on, uh, on this monthly pivot at 4246. And if we drop down to the, day, uh, the, the intraday time frame, the hourly time frame, um, we can see that we are we're still weakening here and uh, we didn't really get any divergence into that new low uh, using the intraday hourly momentum so there's the potential for us to make new lows again here um, and in terms of where we uh, in terms of the target like i say we'd be looking for a move initially here we have weekly range support uh, which would put us in let's see so we'd be looking for a move down to 42.65. Could see some profit taking from there, but this leg to the downside certainly now um, has impulsive qualities. Uh, we could be setting up here uh, for this uh, new load to put, put in place, and that would complete this initial impulse leg. And then what we'd be looking for would be the opportunity to play a corrective move 
So ideally we break lower, put in a, a new low, and then we see this three wave corrective pattern. And uh, we could be back in testing this prior support zone uh, as resistance. And that's where I'd be looking to re-engage on the short side for those that, uh, that work with me know that I've been short the S&P and covered short positions this morning. Uh, so I'm looking now for a corrective move to play out and then the opportunity to get back in on the short side in terms of the S&P. The other trade that I've been running and, uh, and I've talked about uh, quite a lot recently is this VIX position. The VIX obviously is the uh, is a, a basically a barometer of the, set, the risk in the market, uh, often referred to as a, a, you know, the market's insurance policy. And um, we we were trading down into this 15 level, and I highlighted to uh, to the traders I work with that I wanted to be long the VIX at that 15 handle uh, to play for a correction. And so if we go to the daily chart here, we can see. The VIX. Uh, this was the buy zone that I highlighted uh, to the team, and uh, and I have a bunch of VIX positions running now. Uh, currently, about four of them, uh, all with uh, all carrying nice profits. So I'm going to be locking in some profits in terms of the VIX as we trade into this 22 area. We can see that uh, this zone between 21 and 22 has was prior support likely to be a, see a little bit of resistance here. But ultimately what I'm looking for with the VIX here is uh, a pop-up to potentially test into the 28 zone. Um, and if the idea that we are going to see this window of, of corrective action develop, then uh, that would send the VIX higher as, uh, as the market volatility increases. So holding VIX positions and, uh, and we'll see if we can get through the 22, then, uh, then we can start to think about uh, the 26, certainly in 28 area, uh, before I've been looking to potentially cover these trades. And again, the window in terms of the corrective phase here that we're moving into, um, it's, I'm not talking about the markets crashing. Uh, certainly, I'm not, uh, that's not my, my point. But what I've been talking about over the past few weeks is the idea that we're coming into a period where we can trade a corrective move and then we'll reassess to see how the market um, positions our buyers can step back in, or are we going to see a, a bit more of a uh, protracted correction? But we manage that step by step. We don't get ahead of ourselves, and we're not talking about uh, financial Armageddon here. We're just trading uh, the logical price patterns as they develop. So that's the VIX. Let's go back now and take a look at some of these other equity indexes. So here we have the NASDAQ. NASDAQ obviously has been on a tear. This is going to be a very pivotal test here for the NASDAQ because we have either completed a, a fifth wave extension here, or if buyers step back in at the 14,460 level, then what we can start to think about is the idea of a fifth wave extension to test this ascending trend line resistance, which will complete a sequence and, uh, and will set us up then uh, for a more meaningful correction to the downside from those levels at uh, 15,280. But similar to the idea that we just looked at in terms of the S&P, if, um, if the buyers aren't home at, uh, at this trend line, then we've got to think about uh, a deeper correction developing. So the next real uh, support zone, the prior resistance at 14,000 and change would be the first uh, objective. And then any corrective move, uh, we could start to think about um, a retest of the trend line from below, prior trend line support to act as resistance. And then we'd be looking for an equality objective uh, in terms of the next leg to the downside. So we start, if we start to take out these pivotal trend lines, then we want to start mapping out how, how the, a correction, a more protracted correction um, could develop. So certainly this is a type of scenario I've been watching very closely now in, uh, in the NASDAQ. If we don't find buyers, at the 14,500 level. If we do find buyers there, then you can start to look at, and, and we, we, you know, we get a decent bullish reversal pattern. Um, then we can start to think about uh, trading the fifth, the potential fifth wave extension and, uh, and setting long positions. So we're, we're coming into some very pivotal areas on these equity markets. We know we've got a bunch of momentum divergence. So we'll see if we can get some, some follow through here. Let's take a look at the uh, Dow Jones. The Dow uh, was trading to the top side of this trend channel. 
um, took took out the, you've got a couple of closes there, but we're seeing a sharp reversal today. And I would think if we get a close below 34,100, then we can look to think about extending down to certainly retest the 33,000 handle as the, uh, as the next logical uh, target zone. DAX, also in a bit of trouble here. We took out the trend line support. We were consolidating. I was thinking potentially we'd get another leg higher, but what I think we're looking at now is a move down to test the support here back into these lows between the uh, 14,800 and 14,980 level. Uh, see if buyers step in there. Equally, if they don't, then we start to think about uh, a deeper corrective move in the DAX, and we could be looking at these prior highs uh, back down into the 14,100 level. Let's see how uh, how we trade and if buyers step in in this initial support zone. The Nikkei, as mentioned previously, the the weakest of uh, of the bunch at the moment. We've obviously uh, had news. Uh, overnight, really, that, um, that we one we've got China uh, issuing a uh, an, an easing uh, monetary policy note, and uh, and that comes on the back of some uh, less than impressive growth data out of China. Uh, bear in mind, China were the first in and first out of the uh, out of the the pandemic. It appears now that the market is getting some jitters here on the basis that we aren't seeing. Uh, exponential growth really developed in China, and, uh, and that's led to some concerns here in the market. We're seeing a bit of a, a pullback in terms of equities. So, first place to look now on the downside is going to be a retest of these prior lows at the 27,131 level. Uh, as we don't, uh, as we don't see a big bounce develop, I'll be watching for uh, bearish reversal pattern set short positions targeting. This is the equality objective. So, let me just draw this in for you so you can see what we're looking at. So we have this leg completing the first leg of the correction, then we correct against there, and then we're looking for this equality objective uh, to complete the major corrective pattern uh, down into this 25,976 level. So we'll keep an eye on, the, on, certainly on this zone, because this is also going to feed into some of these yen pairs we're going to look at in a minute as well. Um, talked about the VIX. Let's check in with the dollar index. Uh, Equal weighted dollar index. We have been tracking a uh, potential correction here in the dollar index, looking ultimately for a test of this uh, 93.73. And again, just so you visually can, uh, can see what I'm talking about. So we have this big corrective wave playing out. And, um, and we want to see that 93.73 test. In the interim here, we could pull back. We've been trading in this uh, this pitchfork here. We could pull back and test uh, weekly range support down to 91.70s. And I'd certainly be watching there if we get bullish reversal patterns to, uh, to get in on the long side here to target this 93.73. That's going to be a key decision point area for the market. We've also got the yearly pivot 94.15. And what's been driving uh, the dollar here is we're seeing some, uh, some weakness in the US 10-year. Um, rolling over as, uh, as the market uh, begins to reprice um, on growth expectations. And so what we have is the US 10 years, as we can see now, as tested. So let me draw it in here so we can visually see what we're looking at. So we have this leg, this leg, and then we have the equality objective. You can see we've tested it pretty much to the tip here. And we'll see now if buyers or sellers in terms of the 10 year notes and buyers in terms of yield, obviously, uh, step back into the market. Uh, if we don't find support here, then we can start to think about certainly a retest of the yearly pivot here at 1.06%. Uh, and then if, uh, if that rolls over, then we've got this major trend line support back down below 1%, so 0.9% in terms of uh, the 10 year yield there. Gold has had a, a, a nice pop higher here um, from the uh, support zone we talked about back down to the 1757 level. I've been, I've been watching gold. Let's go to the intro chart and see if we can figure a set up here. <clears throat> so we have... Let's change that to that. Uh, time frame. That's what we want. 
So I think we're, get, we're getting into the area here. You can see we've got a bit of divergence developing. So what I think is we completed an initial extension here. It's, uh, so we can, we're in the phase, I think, now of completing this first cycle off the lows. And what I'll be watching for now will be a, a corrective pattern to develop. So any move that, uh, that sets up like this into, uh, into a three-wave corrective pattern, back down into these prior highs, ideally, uh, at the 1790 area. And I'll be watching for, uh, for this scenario to develop and looking at opportunities to buy gold at 1790 to play for, uh, for an extension higher, certainly to start to think about uh, 1840 as an upside objective. So I'm keeping an eye on, uh, on gold there on the intraday time frames, you can see in the daily we're, uh, we're kicking on positively. Crude oil. Crude was uh, the, the initial driver here for, I think, some of the weakness we've seen in these markets. Uh, we're testing the monthly pivot from above. Uh, I anticipate we could see a bit of a corrective move here. Ultimately, what I'm looking for with crude now is to get down and test this 66.30 level um, in crude. And certainly, I'll be paying very close attention to how we trade there or in extension down to the 64. This, this I think, this zone here is going to be the the next uh, serious opportunity to uh, to look at long positions in uh, in gold. Let me uh, sorry, crude oil. Uh, let me just draw that in. Now. So that's that's the area I'll be paying really close attention to in terms of crude. If we get down there, watching for bullish reversal patterns to uh, set long positions, then I think we can start to think about getting up into the uh, top side of this channel again for a third test. So up towards eighty five dollars in terms of crude oil. So uh, we're going to pay really close attention to how this pattern starts to play out in terms of crude. Bitcoin, still under the cost here. I'm, I'm looking for a test of the, uh, of the yearly pivot at the 20,700 level. Um, we're not seeing any meaningful bounces in terms of Bitcoin at the moment. If anything, uh, this, this looks to me like a, a bear flag uh, consolidation pattern developing. And certainly, we want to be trading back through this trend line resistance at 45,000 before we could get constructive again on Bitcoin. So, whilst we continue to chop around here, I'm looking for another leg lower. And certainly, then I'd start to pay attention to, uh, to Bitcoin in terms of uh, adding to positions. I have the position running from, uh, from last October here, uh, which I actually called in, the, in one of these live analysis sessions last year, uh, 10,000. Uh, 500 area. So, um, so I would look to add to that position. And this is a cash position. So I'm not trading on leverage here. I'm just, uh, you know, it's a cash holding position. But if we get down in here, then I'd certainly start to, uh, to get interested again in Bitcoin. Let's take a look at some of these dollar majors. Dollar yen breaking trend line uh, support here on the daily. So this is another one then we can start to think about the hourly time frame. And you can see we've got some impulsive qualities developing here, taking out some swing points. Ideally, we'd like to see a close through 109.50s today. And then we can start to think about, again, similar, similar scenario. We can break down here. Then we want to play the first three-wave corrective move, ideally back into this uh, prior support of the 1040 zone, then to act as resistance for the next leg to the downside in terms of, uh, in terms of the dollar yen. Swissy, also getting uh, mauled today. So looking for a big outside reversal here in terms of the Swissy. And the, again, similar, similar, uh, similar thought process. If, um, if we go here onto the hourly time frame, the only slight issue I can see here with the Swissy is are we going to trade into an equal legs extension target here? Let's have a look. No, we've taken it out. So, uh, so that's that's fine. So, what I, I the, the type of pattern I would like to play here in the Swiss, and we'll look at something similar in the Euro in a minute, is uh, is to play. I'm thinking about this as a double top here. This uh, these two highs. Let me just draw that in for you. So we have first high here. We've got our second one over here. This is our double top area. What I'd like to see develop now would be a move down. Let's get the 
to so move here into the uh, weekly range support 9130, these prior lows uh, 9140. So anything back in here, and then we get ideally the three wave consolidation move back in to ultimately set up a bigger head and shoulder scenario, uh, giving us another big leg of downside to play for there in terms of the Swissy. So keep an eye on how we respond into this 9130, 9140 area, and then watch for this consolidation. Oftentimes the, the, uh, the left shoulder will be matched here or mirrored in the right shoulder. So this may not be a setup that is something that occurs imminently, but certainly this, this is a high probability pattern that we want to pay attention to in terms of the daily time frame. So we can be thinking about this um, 14th. So, you know, next week uh, we could be seeing uh, this pattern play out. So keep an eye on that one. Um, let's jump straight to the Euro because I've got a similar setup here in the Euro. If we pull out here. So we've got this double bottom in play in terms of the Euro. So what I'm looking for now is, uh, is to see any pullback from, we're trading at the daily range resistance, finding some profit taking there, which isn't unusual. So any three wave pattern like so, gets back down to test the uh, 118, just above the 118. I think that's gonna be an opportunity on the long side uh, in terms of the Euro, and then look to take out this trend line resistance at the 1850, and certainly start to think about test then up towards uh, the 1890 handle, and, uh, and maybe maybe beyond there, but the problem we've got with the euro at the moment is if we go to the daily time frame. Is that we have this subjective to the downside at one sixteen twenty two. So again, just so you can uh, visually follow that, we have this leg, this leg, and this leg looking to complete there. So any correction, symmetry swing correction, so we measure the last corrected leg, right, so, okay, what's that? So any, uh, any move here from these lows into uh, the midpoint of the channel there. So 1924 is gonna be the target zone, I think, for a, for a correction to play out. So anything like this, uh, we wanna pay close attention to, uh, do, the, do the sellers start to step back in uh, matching, we can see, let me just use the extension tool. So that gives us that symmetry, oh, it's actually lower than that. So it's 1910 is the area we want to be watching. Um, so when you move into this area, matching this last corrective phase uh, could be an opportunity to think again about the short side in terms of the Euro. Uh, this, and again, if you think about the, the dollar index, what we're looking for in terms of the dollar index, is that, uh, is that test into uh, this support zone before extending higher. So that feeds directly into the Euro then. Uh, so any pullbacks are an opportunity on the long side that certainly want to be thinking about booking profits at the 1910 area and then seeing if, uh, if sellers step back in. Um, just cognizant of the time here. Uh, let's take a quick look at some of these yen. So this is the Aussie yen. Let's actually go to the daily time frame. So in terms of these yens, and you think about the yen as a safe haven, uh, there are some target areas we want to pay attention to. So certainly in the euro yen, watch 128.65, because that's the equality objective um, versus the current structure. So that comes in there like that. If, uh, if buyers step in there, then there could be an opportunity certainly in the short term on the on the long side uh, want to be careful of how we trade at the 130.64 if this setup plays out because again you could be thinking about uh, a head and shoulder scenario there um, the aussie yen has a similar pattern this was a, a trade uh, that i sent out earlier in the week so watch how we trade at the 80.62 level that's the equality objective versus this st swing structure here and we've got these prior highs, and we've also got the 38.2% retracement of the, uh, of the last leg of this advance. So this is gonna be a pivotal area because it's from here that the trend can continue higher, or certainly if we don't see buyers stepping in, then that's tradable information for us because we know we could be seeing a much deeper correction uh, develop. Similar story in the Aussie, 
Actually, the Aussie is, is sitting now right at its equality objective. So again, thinking in terms of uh, tradable information, can we see buyers step in here now and uh, get some bullish reversal patterns going? Because if we do, this corrective pattern here, this big ABC that we've been tracking, could actually, uh, could actually be complete. So we really want to pay attention because if that's the case, then we could be looking at the next leg to the upside for the Aussie. But obviously, with these equity markets under pressure, it's very difficult for these uh, these commodity currencies to perform. So there's it's a few cross uh, cross market or intermarket dynamics that you need, really need to be a pay, uh, pay attention to at the moment to see which way we're going to head next. Um, so I've been running that for 30 minutes now, guys. Um, I've just opened it up briefly here for uh, Q and A. Does anyone have a chart they'd like me to take a look at? or a question about anything I've, I've mentioned here. Uh, if so, you can type it into the chat box or, uh, or I could unmute your mic. Equally, if you don't have a question, uh, if you type an N in the chat box, that just lets me know that, uh, that I've done a reasonable job of explaining everything and, uh, and we're all on the same page. So pay close attention to these equity markets today, guys. This is uh, this is what's driving the current price action. Also, the yield, ten-year yield, and the dollar. Uh, these these dynamics need to uh, need to be watched carefully here, and uh, and we'll see if we're going to enter this phase, this corrective phase that we've been talking about, and um, and then we can start to track where the target areas are, of potential completion of these collections. Okay, if there aren't any questions, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up here. I hope you found it helpful, and, uh, and I'll catch you all at the same time next week. Thanks very much, everyone.